Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Do More With Your Money podcast. I am your host, TJ Van Gerven. On today's podcast episode, I'm going to share with you why timing markets, whether it's a crypto market, stock market, is a zero-sum game and in some ways is gambling. And we can talk about the semantics there because I kind of uh, got some people riled up last night on Twitter when I commented on something and I wanted to kind of explain my thoughts because... Well, let's just get into it. <laughs> so, you know, I saw a tweet last night from somebody in the crypto community, and basically they were saying that, are we at the point, let me just find the tweet because uh, it's a little, here we go, here we go. He says, are we really back in September again when everyone was underexposed BTC? And I, responsed, I responded, market timing doesn't work in the stock market or crypto. Timing is basically gambling. And boy, did I set off um, a bit of a firestorm. Not really. I mean, he just quote tweeted me and, and made fun of me and dunked on me a little bit. But the point I was trying to get at is that he's speculating, you know, are we back in September when the crypto market took off? And are we underexposed BTC, meaning that we should have more exposure to Bitcoin so that we can grow with this subsequent rally? And my point here is that that's essentially market timing, right? If you're, it's just like a, a sophisticated way of saying, you know, should we be increasing our allocation to Bitcoin? And my argument there is, is that that is essentially a market timing strategy where, yes, you could get in more now and benefit from it, but you could also get in more now, and you know, Bitcoin could take a subsequent drop. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that if you have long-term conviction in Bitcoin as the asset class, you should be holding it as a percentage to your investable assets that you have long-term conviction in. If you're constantly increasing and decreasing your allocation, you're essentially market timing. And the reason why some people get upset with this is because they're saying, well, we have sophisticated reasons for how we're determining market timing. So if you have, you know, if you're following certain trends or if you're using certain strategies, it's a sophisticated form of market timing more so than just saying, you know, I'm going to get out of the crypto market. I'm going to get back into the crypto market because you're feeling a certain way. So it's a higher level of sophistication, but that doesn't make it not market timing. And when we talk about market timing being a zero sum game, the reason why it's a zero sum game is because there will be winners who can time the market and will, you know, make superior returns, but then a lot of people will actually underperform unless they just held, you know, their crypto as a position long term because they had conviction long term. So let me just give you a, gener a def definition of a zero-sum game so I can kind of crystallize this a little bit better. A zero-sum game is a situation in game theory in which one person's gain is equivalent to another's loss. So the net change in wealth or benefit is zero. So if I'm getting in to, or if I'm getting out of crypto before it drops, um, I'm benefiting and somebody else is losing. Somebody else is holding the bag. If I get back into crypto, and then I, it goes up, I'm gaining because somebody else was selling. This happens in the stock market too, so I'm not trying to pick on the crypto market, but the difference with the stock market is, is that long-term, the stock market is not a zero-sum game. Why is long-term not the zero, is the stock market not a zero-sum game? Because when you invest in the stock market, yes, there is risk in the short term, but over time, hopefully, we're growing as the world population is growing, we're increasing the productivity of the actual individuals in the game of capitalism, we're creating a better standard of living, we're creating iPhones, we're creating Teslas, we're creating all these products and services that make everyone's life better. Investors that invest in those companies benefit from it because they're growing their wealth. People are employed and they're making income from the redistribution of these you know, goods and services. And then the profits are also redistributed to the shareholders and provide an incentive to continue to invest in bettering society overall. So it's not a zero sum game. Everybody is winning there. 
right? Not one person's gain is not equivalent to another person's loss when you're a long-term investor. And you could argue that for Bitcoin in a different way. I don't know exactly how you would argue it, but if you believe Bitcoin has long-term value, maybe because it's going to um, decentralize the exchange of money, so you know people can easily transfer money, people can retain the value of their wealth if they're in a country where there's hyperinflation or things of that nature, then the demand for Bitcoin will increase if there's a finite supply and that remains um, you know, unbreakable. And that increases the value of Bitcoin. And then you're going to make money long term. But that's different than trying to get in and out of the crypto markets based on market timing strategies. And that's what this person was doing. I mean, if you look in their bio, they have a crypto journal, a trade journal. So if you actually reviewed that person's trade journal and you compared it to you know the actual performance of Bitcoin, would it be better? Maybe. I don't know. But I have a feeling that the longer you keep trading and the longer that you keep doing market timing strategies, whether it's a sophisticated market timing strategy based on, you know, moving averages or whatever you're using versus just holding your finger in the air and going, oh, today I'm going to get in, today I'm going to get out. I have a feeling you'd underperform over long periods because all it takes, all it takes is a few days or weeks to be out of the market and you're going to miss out on the gains if there's long-term value in in bitcoin in particular so we have the saying in the stock market time in the market is better than timing the market because if you yes you can miss out on the drawdowns but there's going to be more up days than there are going to be down days and so just missing out on a handful of days can really impact our long-term returns so again when <laughs> You know, my response to this person when he was making fun of me saying market timing doesn't work in the stock market or crypto, he says, I said, there will be winners, but mostly losers. It's a zero sum game. So this person, maybe they're a great trader and they have this sophisticated market timing strategy where they are getting superior returns. But guess what? The people who are following this person, who are following their advice, aren't necessarily going to implement their strategies, aren't necessarily going to be able to stay on top of how quickly they're implementing their strategies. And you know what? A lot of them are probably going to end up underperforming just owning the asset. So instead of constantly getting in and out of an asset, whether it's stocks, cryptocurrency, um, this is one of the benefits of real estate is that you can't get in and out of real estate really quickly. So you're actually benefiting from remaining invested is you want to determine what allocation you want to a certain asset class based on your long term conviction as an investor and then stay invested. So you know, if you're a technician in, you know, crypto or stock market, this probably pisses you off. And I, again, I want to say there are winners and maybe you're that winner, but it's a zero sum game. Just like the NBA, think about the NBA with uh, the best athletes in the world. You know, maybe you're the Giannis Antetokounmpo of trading <laughs> and you have, you are superior, but you might win, but a lot of people are going to lose. With long-term investing, the probability of success is much higher for all of us. The practicality is much higher for all of us. The return on effort is much higher for all of us. And you know, and I'm a financial planner, so I believe in using financial planning first to segue into how you're allocated. Because in my opinion, financial planning and using like the practicality of day-to-day -day life is going to make for a lot better chance of success. Like if you're trying to market time and use financial planning, I mean, it's just like, yeah, you can outsource that. But, you know, in my, what I've looked at through the data is, you know, you, there are winners. <laughs> it's just like the active manager, you know, strat, you know, the active manager data, there are active managers that outperform over long stretches, but most of them underperform. A lot of that has to do with fees. But a lot of it just has to do with markets are really efficient, more so than people want to believe. And, you know, they can they correct themselves pretty quickly. So those are my thoughts on, um, you know, market timing and why it's a zero sum game. A little bit all over the place today, but uh, I, was, I was fired up last night. So you can check the thread on Twitter. Um, my Twitter is at TJ Van Gerven. And as always, uh, if you want to be included in my weekly email list where I provide three tips in the areas of financial independence, tax optimization, 
and equity compensation, go to the show notes and join that email list. I hope you have a great rest of your week.